Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna find out, is AMD FX still relevant or should we be attending its funeral? That, that, that was something interesting. And we have these, uh, these get ups over here so we can show you guys what it was like back in the day when you had an FX 8320 and if you all should still buy one. But before we do that, let's pay some bills and hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GoV and their new DreamView Gaming Light Pro system featuring two light bars and a large flexible light strip to take your gaming setup to the next level. We here at the Toasty Bros are some of the first people to get access to this kit and set it up on one of our gaming setups here at the office and love how much it adds to the overall gaming experience. This kit comes with an included camera that mounts on the top of your monitor and allows you to see what's going on in real time on your screen and match the lighting to it. This allows for a very immersive gaming and also movie watching experience. From racing games to FPS shooters, the color matching that this light kit can create makes one of the best gaming experiences on the market and takes your setup to the next level. Check the link down below to learn more and special thanks again to Gobi for sponsoring today's video. So we basically scoured eBay and for a total of $370 we were able to put together this FX 8320 build. On eBay these are really prevalent. You can basically go through and get a motherboard, CPU, and RAM combo. You can even do this on AliExpress and Alibaba and those other sites as well. But eight cores, which sounded like a lot back in the day, but once it kind of came out that AMD stretched the truth a little bit, these things weren't really that great. And honestly, I think this 8320 performs like worse than an i5-2400. So we're just trying to figure out, does it still have a place in today's society? Of course, at any price point, if it's like next to nothing, then yeah, sure, you could still use it for a budget gaming PC because a lot of people definitely gamed on these back in the day. This guy did for a while with the 6300 and 8350. So yeah, you could definitely still get them, but what we're gonna do is build a PC around some components that would be era accurate, sort of. Um, we have a graphics card that would have been relevant around the time that this processor was relevant, and we're going to build a PC, do some benchmarks, and then compare it to some other budget systems that you can make in 2022 and see if it's worth it. So let's talk about the rest of the parts. For the CPU motherboard RAM combo, we got this off of eBay, and this was surprisingly cheap. I think it was a little over $100. So we have two crucial sticks of RAM, and that is eight gigs total, four gig sticks, DDR3 1333, under this stock cool right here we have an AMD FX 8320 which is an eight core eight thread but really uh, AMD kind of came out later on and they got a lawsuit I believe over it. it's like um that was back before like hyper threading was quite as popular I don't know I don't know why they lied about it I don't really know the whole story but long story short we have found that the four core four thread i5 2400 performs better I think in every way than this 8350 not by a whole lot so that's kind of like your baseline comparison so you know price accordingly and then we have a gigabyte GA78 LMT. These are pretty common boards. Micro ATX. You do have some room for expansion. This is DDR3 only though, so really, I think your max upgrade path would be an 8350 maybe could go up to a 9590 if the board supports it, but I doubt it. And uh, you could add more RAM. You got four slots. You can get some bigger DIMMs. And uh, we have a lot of SATA ports, so you could add more storage. We even have an IDE port in case you want to add yourself a ribbon cable because we know we're going back in time. Let's talk about the rest of that stuff and just don't worry about my hat guys, don't worry about it. So what we have right here is a TP-Link gigabit switch. Just kidding, Whoa. it's a graphics card in a box, you know, eBay special. We have a GTX 960. Now a 960 probably would have been a relevant card back when the 8350 was around. Um, I know some older AMD cards were pretty popular with the FX line, but yeah, 960 is a budget card. You can have it for under a hundred bucks, right around a hundred bucks. I had a motherboard show up in tin foil, by the way. So this is, <laughs> this is, this is way better. So yeah, look at that. That's in pretty good shape, actually. Good old 960, pretty overkill for it. Two big fans, black and red design. But yeah, it's a 960, 8 pin power. It'll work great for pairing with this A320, and we'll see how well it does. Now this is a rare commodity. This is a Natac 512GB SSD. A 512GB SSD back when this was relevant, man, that would be a very expensive price to pay. And this thing runs SATA too, so we're definitely not even gonna be maxing out this, well, two and a half inch SSD. And nowadays with even SATA 3, you're gonna be able to max out these SSDs. So so that's something to keep in mind, but SSD is still way faster than running with a hard drive, which is what most people would have done with this. And for the power supply, this is a very good budget unit. This is the Asus Tough Gaming 550 watt 80 plus bronze. Ranks high on the tier list. Good option if you're wanting to build a budget gaming PC. Probably overkill for this whole setup, but you know what? We got a good deal on it, so we ran with that. And then this is a good budget case from Antec, the NX200M. Again, we're just going to make a very clean build and run through some benchmarks and try to find some comparison footage of maybe like a 10 Gen i3 build that's a little bit more expensive to see how big the gap is between doing something like that. Because I'd imagine an i3 motherboard and RAM. So 
is double the price, actually give you double the performance? Well, we'll find out. Let's build it in Venture again. All right, gamers, now that we finished a very interesting benchmark run with this FX8320, let's talk about the numbers we got. Now, we decided to test this system, and later on you'll see what I ended up doing with this system in a handful of titles, those being Apex Legends, Fortnite, God of War, and Halo Infinite. Now, first up with Apex Legends and Fortnite, these are esports titles. I kind of want to see how the FX8320 does because if you can pick up this whole bundle around 300 bucks with the 960 and everything, and it can play esports titles, medium, low, high settings, or performance mode at at least 60 plus FPS, it does compete directly with the whole Optiplex approach, which if you haven't seen our $300 1080p PC, hit the eye on the top right corner and check that video out. You are going to probably spend a little bit more than $300 on this combo, but we're going to do some comparisons to that PC that we built so you guys can see exactly what you're getting for your money. and. To be fair, you can build a custom PC with this. This isn't like an ugly Optiplex, or to some people, an ugly Optiplex um, that you just uh, drop a GPU in and you're kind of stuck with. You can do a custom PC with this and make it look as clean as possible. But enough about that, let's talk about some benchmark numbers. First up in Apex Legends, medium low settings. We got like 60 to 70 FPS. In Apex Legends, we're actually GPU bound. I thought that the FX8320 was not gonna be able to handle it, but it looks like in Apex, you're not gonna have any problems with a mid-range lower end GPU like a 960 or 970, and you won't really be held back by the A320. Now the $300 PC, Opti, which had an i7-4790 and a 1050 Ti, not exactly the same specs, but again, the price point is about the same, maybe a little bit less, we got an average of about 60 FPS. So it really goes to show these lower end systems can play Apex. I mean, it's an esports title, it's not super hard to run, no surprise there. Fortnite on performance mode, however, did give me some pretty decent numbers. I thought the 8320 was gonna be a big CPU bottleneck in a game like Fortnite on the lower settings because of the really bad IPC. I mean, this thing in terms of IPC is worse than the Ryzen 3 1200. So I really didn't expect much, but getting 100 plus FPS FPS on performance mode really gives Fortnite a lot of credit because performance mode absolutely saved this thing. Running on any other mode probably would have had a lot of different stutters, but it's cool to see that a performance setting actually allows this thing to have a high refresh rate gaming experience. The Optiplex did better though, obviously that 4790 is going to have better IPC, getting 200 plus FPS, averaging around 180 to like 190 most of the time, but hitting 200s more often. So yeah, Opti definitely for the win for in the esports title because of the newer i7 versus the old their FX architecture. Now this is where things got interesting and I started having a little bit of fun. God of War wouldn't launch. We tried multiple times, but as you can see on screen here, the menu was incredibly laggy and it just wouldn't load in. I did end up pinning that on the 960 because we only have a two gig 960, not a four gig 960, but I did do some research and there are some people with a two gig 960 actually getting in game. So I think it might be a combination of multiple things here. The 960 only have two gigs of VRAM, but also that 8320 just not being optimized for this very new game that was just ported to PC. Now Halo Infinite is where things 
things got a little freaky. So the 960 is not technically supported. Two gig card, you really need a four gig card, but you can still launch the game even though it gives you the warning sign that you probably shouldn't launch the game. So I launched it, two gig card, and uh, yeah, as you can tell, the textures did not load in properly at all. That 8320 was absolutely maxed out in the menu, and later on throughout the benchmark run, it started to settle down a little bit, and it does show that the 960 is a bottleneck, but that 8320 is still not great either because it is hitting 100% every so often. So there is a clear balance, which sounds really weird to say, between this 960 and 8320 in newer AAA titles like Halo Infinite. But yeah, the 960 really was an issue here, not getting those textures to load in. But because of that, I thought to do something very stupid. And yes, I am going to, well, put out there that this is very stupid. I grabbed an RTX 3060 from our $1,300 gaming PC build, threw it in this thing, and decided to launch Halo Infinite again, and we had some issues. First of all, the load times were so bad. I'll touch on that here in a minute, but just getting into a match took forever, and that 3060 and another system with the Ryzen 5 5600X, no problem whatsoever. Of course, that's NVMe versus 2.5 inch, but that SATA 2 speed and just the CPU in general made it really hard to get into a game. It was very, very slow. But once it actually got into a game, we got 80 to 90 FPS. Great, right? Well, not really. As you can see in the top left corner, MSI Afterburner shows our FPS numbers, but also it shows our frame timing, which shows the difference between frames popping on screen has some pretty high latency to it. Normally, you'd be looking at like three to four milliseconds in that latency uh, counter on MSI Afterburner for a very smooth experience. But when it gets up to 10, 11, 12 every so often, the game just feels laggy, even though it is running at 80 to 90 FPS, it's not a smooth gaming experience at all. And even going up to high settings in Halo Infinite, we did get 60 to 70 FPS, but it was that same latency that just really plagued the FX8320 and making it a not good option for the 3060. Obviously going into this, I knew the 3060 was gonna be totally bottlenecked by the 8320, but it was a higher end GPU I wanted to test just to make sure that this game actually works properly with the 8320. It does, but that latency just makes it not a great gaming experience in my opinion. Opinion. Now, the biggest issue I have with the FX8320 is not its gaming performance, it's just its performance overall in everything else basically being a computer. Uh, the SATA 2.0 really slows down any SSD you throw in it. Of course, there's no NVMe support because, you know, what, NVMe wasn't a thing back then. Um, so you're running a two and a half inch SSD, but those speeds are really not much faster than a hard drive because you're fully saturating that SATA 2 link. So that's the biggest issue is load times are very slow. It almost feels like you're on a hard drive. And also you're really gonna be struggling to do anything productive. Now, do keep in mind that SATA 2 limitation is only on this motherboard. There are some really high-end 990FX boards that have SATA 3, but you're going to be paying such a premium for those boards, it doesn't make sense anymore to pick up an 8320. The only value that's there with the 8320 is getting it very cheap with a used board and RAM and everything for like 100 bucks. You're not going to do that with a 990FX board. Those boards are pretty premium. So overall, I think the 8320 has a place in the market for eSports titles, but anything beyond that, not really playable. But in my opinion, I would really lean more towards an Optiplex build, just in terms of having a better Windows experience. Um, gaming performance is pretty comparable. Even like an i5-2400 would probably be pretty comparable to this. But in terms of just using Windows and just having an overall usable computer, I just can't really recommend it at all for the price point. So let me know what you all think of FX down below. If you guys are rocking an FX 6300, 8320, 8350, 9590, let me know down below. But yeah, this was a more extended benchmark section. I just want to try something a little bit different, throwing that th uh, 3060. And uh, I think it gave us some very interesting results. Let's bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so we did some benchmark and we have some kind of interesting results. I mean, game-wise, it really wasn't too bad. I mean, you have a 962 gig. In some games that were really GPU bound, it was almost like the GPU was like the ever so slightest bottleneck, but not really. Um, the big thing is this board only runs at SATA 2, meaning that SATA 3 is just, it wasn't available yet, unless you got a really high-end board, like the 990 chipset, which is going to run you quite a bit. And at that point, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but there is some rare use cases where you can get the right prices on things. I mean, we don't really recommend going out and trying to duplicate this build, although it's not a bad price. I mean, 370, full custom build. It has the ever so slightest upgrade path. I mean, you get a good case, good power supply, you could easily add some more fans. You have a good graphics card. At that point, I would just basically swap out the board, 
uh, the CPU and the RAM. So at that point, it's like, why not just, you know, do it right from the start. So overall, it was a fun experiment to see what FX can do in 2022. If you have any other older hardware you'd like to see us test, let us know in the comment section down below. Maybe we'll look at some first gen i7s or something like that on the Intel side of things. But yeah, very fun to do some interesting tests. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Peace out. So this PC will be for sale at PCBros.tech and it'll probably be a really cheap price because you know we didn't pay that much for it and it's not the prettiest, it's a little bit loud. So that is a way we can pass deals on to you guys, but we also have way better computers than this. We have some stable PCs that you can buy that are pretty much always in stock over at our website and also some one-off customs that we build over on Twitch that look absolutely beautiful. Check out our website, PCBros.tech and use code TOASTYBROS2 on checkout to save 2%. See you guys later, goodbye. I just punched the table.